Let me explain uh, explain about the uh, API call. Let's say actually usually to have like this char no inter C I'll go here. Yeah. Something like this. Right. Let's say there's a you know phone. You can read this code, right? It's a very simple one. So usually API call what I mean is there will gonna be some function call with certain parameters, right? And there will gonna be return value, right? And then API uh, with API override, that's the one that shows every API call it showed you what was the parameter and what was the return value and then who was the caller, right? Who was the caller? We were gonna be main was the caller or the uh, executable name where this once is compiled, what is one gonna be, right? If you just compile it, then they, they were gonna be executable file, right? Executable file is calling this one. Let's go even more detail because it is a library function for this case. Uh, H, if that's the one, then it will gonna be belongs to, for example, let's see that. This case DLL, let's say there is no such a thing, but you know, let's let's assume you know default libc DLL is actually you know libc dot DLL, but you know in, in the Linux is gonna be libc dot so right. But let's say the point here, what I want to make is let's say it once it's compiled, if a whole yeah, the code is compiled, let's say the output will gonna be hello world dot exe right. Which we will not depends on the libc.dll, right? That has a has prenef, right? Then the API, you know, override is gonna indicate. Okay, caller was the hello world exe. There was a caller, and it calls uh, libc. Um, it called prenef with the parameter here, right? And the return value will gonna be number of characters here, right? So it's gonna be 12. The return value will gonna be 12, right? And once you call, then you know return you and you can see those parameter and the return value using the win API. Okay, so far, do you have any question about the API call? Let me explain what's going on with this open process in the query remote thread with some uh, drawing. Actually, I actually didn't prepare a slide for it, actually explicitly, but sometimes you know, when you learn, you know, it's easier to actually you see, you know, easier to see at the whiteboard rather than some person is you know, going through the slide, right? So I still pre prefer that method. So let's go, but I actually prefer the whiteboard, but I, you know, you know, want this one to be you know, later on to post the website, so I'm going to use this, you know, what's called this one anyway, so people can on the internet can see me easily. I made a slide to explain uh, for. Function, you know, it is API calls mean you know, or not in a uh, different way to say just in the function calls, you know, and what is actually going on in the uh, process memory uh, space. So, how about this? Let me actually go through one by one and then explain uh, this one again. So, let's go back to the VM that we have and We saw the pattern open process, virtual alloc ex, write process, create remote thread. Okay, and I'm going to go actually what the, uh, the API definition looks like and what is, uh, and then we'll explain, explain what's going on here. 
So let's go see in detail. And one thing while you are looking at this uh, API, always is, uh, is uh, MSDN has a very good explanation. So when you see the uh, API call, you can search for the open process and MSDN. Then this is uh, almost always the first you know, result to Google, uh, the, the Google search. Okay. So when we see here open process, what this open source function is ex expecting, it is expecting this you know, in the MSDN, you will, this indicates, okay, this indicates the return value, okay, the first one. And the second one is more, uh, okay, the exact name, uh, kind of a function modifier type, like, you know, it can be like a static in a function or, you know, some other definition is defined, but I don't know exactly what it is. It, or it can, it can be one of like a C decal, you know, standard decal, but I will not look it up. But you can, for now, you can just ignore this part, but, you know, this one returned value, function name, and if it has a in, that means it is an input only, okay? So for open process case, it is expecting uh, D word. D word is like a four byte. On the 32 bit machine, word in, and in the uh, Microsoft is API uh, is declaration, you see D word is always four byte, Boolean one byte, and uh, D word is four byte. But even if we, you know, for now, I don't think you need to uh, just all understand uh, or even need to care about this one. But only thing is return value and whether or not if parameter is an input or parameter is used as an input or output. Okay, so that, that's the only that you need to care. And for open process, there is a DW desired access. So it is, and when you just scroll it down, it explains it basically what it's about, right? It, is a it kind of some you know flex right uh it says you know the access term, the process access rights is about the privileges so for now i don't think even we need to care about this one how about a b inherit handle if you uh, then you can see the definition here so uh, if the value is true the processes created by this process will inherit the handle. So for now, let's say we can ignore it. But for here, the most important thing is if malicious you know, code called the open process, we want to focus on what is actually opening, which is indicated by this process ID, right? So this is a third parameter. When you see the API call open process, you need to pay attention to the, the third parameter, right? Is it? Okay. So here, I'll go back to the uh, drawing. So I, I was going to do a little bit uh, the back and forth of these pages. Let's see, from the beginning. Okay, for here, let's see, we actually saw in the whiteboard, but let's uh, saw it in the, on this slide. So you have one malicious process, right? On the left side and the right side, you have a process of Internet Explorer, which is a benign process, right? So now malicious process want to see what's in the memory in the Internet Explorer, okay? And just to make a, uh, to I want to point that in a corner 32 that DLL is a DLL that is used by most application on the Windows system, okay? And let's say there is a, in the malicious uh, process, let's say there is a inject, you know, DLL function, right? And this, you know, it happens to call the API patterns we just explained on, which one is this slide? Let's see. On slide 40, right? So it calls, let's say, you, you, using the API tracing tool, you saw that open process. Right? And I just explained about in the, in the API uh, definition, the third parameter is the one that is actually getting process ID, it's PID. Now everyone knows at this point what is PID is, right? When we uh, so, uh, use the pro explore, process explorer, then you could see you know, running process and you know, PID associated with a particular <coughs> process, right? So basically this malicious process or gets the PID 
of Internet Explorer, right? And calls open process. This is a one example. It's not. It may differ from the the lab you are actually looking at. So let's say after that, it calls and open process actually returns. You know, after getting this, you know, Internet Explorer using the PID, it returns the handle. Okay. And I will go back to the uh, MSDN. See, open process actually returns handle, right? So the malicious code give the uh, Internet Explorer's uh, PID and returns a handle. Okay. All right. So once it received the handle, then after that it calls virtual alloc ex using this handle and let's go we don't know details about the virtual alloc right so for at this point you want to look up the msdn again right when you see here i already searched it here when you see virtual alloc it received a process handle right we already have it and here it has a lp address as of what it's a optional actually it is an input input but it's a optional right let's go then down here so it is it uh, input or optional so basically it is just specified in the windows try to get an allocate the memory at a certain address however it's not guaranteed so it's also it's optional and it's somewhere here it says you know uh, it, i think it is not always guaranteed See? Um, see. So it's basically you know, trying to get nearby uh, nearby address, but if, you know, if you give I, I, I say, okay, give me uh, 100 bytes at the address in the 4,000, hex 4,000, but you are not guaranteed to receive that one, but it, it try to uh, get to the nearby one, but just, uh, Important things I want to point it out. This one is uh, optional, but you can uh, the malicious process can specify the address when it uh, allocate the memory on the on the Internet Explorer's memory space. Then how about the size? You need to specify. Okay, I want to allocate the memory. However, how much, right? So these parameters actually the first and third one. It is actually is important, but I'm not actually saying you know others are not important, but you know main focus is the first one and then the third one. Okay. Now let's go back to the. Uh, let's go back to the. the sorry about that. Let's see. Okay. What here. Is user space. Or user space. So kernel32.dll and ddll.dll is a, a DLL that is. Uh, used by the user land processes, okay. But underneath, you know, underneath this is uh, at the virtual alloc EF. Very underneath, there is a system call. So kernel is actually you know allocating the memory, you know, for you, right? Because we, when you, uh, I, I can show you back later on. You know, we uh, show these you know, uh, API calls, you know, from the like, kernel thirty two NTDLL, and they go into the you know, uh, kernel, right? Uh, yesterday. Or uh, let's say okay, so it allocated, allocated with a, a certain size, and Windows then allocate the memory at the hex uh, four thousand, and actually return to. Uh, wait a minute, hold on a second. I maybe did it wrong. Okay. Okay, my apologize. I just made this slide for the uh, during the lunch time. So for virtual alloc ex, actually it returns a pointer, right? So let me actually go fix it quick, so you know we can be have actually clear, clear you know the understanding. I want to even uh, ignore that one. This one. Uh, Since this one is optional, the address, so 
once it calls the virtual alert with the process handle and this size, then uh, Windows return a you know, hex 4000, right? And once uh, once the, uh, this uh, uh, malicious process gets the you know, hex 4000, then it uses that address here in order to write something, right? So this one I just changed it, so please ignore the upper layer virtual alert ex, but so 4000 is returned by the virtual alert, then it is immediately used by write process memory. And once write process memory called, what is being specified? Let, let's go back to the MSDN about the write process memory. Here, in the write process memory, it uh, gets input as a process handle, then LP space address is the, the address, you know, we just, let's go back from here, the 4000, right? This one, LP base, where to write to, right? And this in the buffer, and size is also input. When you actually write memory, have you used a mem copy, right? When you do the mem copy, you should specify destination, source, and the source and the buffer size, right? So let's say this when uh, a malicious co code call write process memory, is basically copying the memory, right? But how to do it? It says, okay, this is my destination, all right? But I want you to copy from you know, this you know, buffer. How much you know, size and size that is indicated by the fourth parameter? Okay, does it fine? Right. All right. And again, later when you actually look at the API, you see the uh, detailed information. The parameters here. Okay. And let's go back. To the uh, picture, All right here. Now we saw that you know that's how we, uh, the write process memory is getting process handle and address of 4000, and actually even that DLL, this one probably already exists somewhere in this malicious process area, right? Memory. However, by calling write process memory, it is copying memory area from here to Internet Explorer memory space. Okay. The next, it calls create remote thread, right? And let's go back to what create remote uh, thread is doing. Okay, here, create a uh, create remote thread actually received a process handle, and I uh, I would say this one is not important. So second one and third one is not that important right now. But the one that you want to focus on is that LP start address. Right when a thread starts, it should know from which you know code it has to you know execute, right? And this parameter is the one specified. Okay, uh, start a thread, but start from you know this this address. Okay, and for our particular case is one of the simple example is when malicious code uh, code is create remote thread and then it specified the start address of load library. Okay, it, it gives, okay, I will, I want you to start a thread, but you know, start from the load, uh, just call load library uh, function immediately. Okay, and, and as a, here, the next uh, parameter is a MP parameter. What it is is when this you know function one uh, function that is specified at this you know, LP star address is specified, you can give a parameter. I can basically say I will call this function, but you can use you no know, you know, pass uh, this parameter that specified at this address. That is basically telling the OS you know to you know, call a function, but you know use this parameter, right? This is uh, to the in detail what, what's going on. And as our output is giving a thread, this way is our output, right? Everything is input, this is output, and it actually return, once it creates a thread, then it return thread ID, OK? 
Okay. So when this function is called, then actually Windows Windows actually create a thread at the start address of the load library. This is an example. The malicious uh, process can specify some different you know, uh, code address. Okay. And but it still specify the uh, address of evil DLL dot DLL. And uh, and then please make sure that the, you know in the Internet Explorer if if this evil uh, that DLL string has not written to its own memory space, it cannot access uh, to you know, in the on the malicious process by just default. Okay, and there is no reason for Internet Explorer we're gonna just you know call this you know, open process and you know, read process memory those kind of code because you know, Internet Explorer usually you know is not supposed to just you know uh, look at other process memory because it's only for the you know web browsing, right? So, any question? That's what Emet Microsoft Emet software is supposed to do. Is Checking, right? That's right. Yes, yes. Any question? So now you ha have more information, right? 